Hello and welcome back to the second half of the show with me, Ian Pert Turner on ALB UK television and positivebritain.co.uk. This is the voice of London and I have with me etiquette expert Philip Sykes this afternoon. Philip, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Ian. What a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for your time today. Now, I'm sure you believe, as I believe, that etiquette is for everybody in this country, not just an elite uh, service itself. Tell me a little bit about how you feel uh, etiquette works for anybody in life. Love the question. For me, etiquette and, and manners are very much similar to what I would call such as the traffic lights in society, so we don't bump into each other. Etiquette is for everybody. These are the rules of engagement, the rules and regulations that we all need as human beings to sort of abide to. And this is not the headmaster or the school mistress waving a big stick at you at all. This is about the opportunity to put your best foot forward and to, I think one of the real go-to areas for me is, is having a what can I do for you attitude and how can I support you and help you and, and really think about uh, everything you do in society because in one way or the other it's going to have an impact and in reality give, give me some examples of the etiquette that you feel are really uh, synonymous with Christmas well absolutely for firstly here obviously in the UK uh, it's all about giving gifts and receiving gifts and I love the adage in life you know when you you know give and, and, and never remember receive and never forget and it's not all only just about the gift it's about the thought that counts and, and the thought behind the actual gift giving uh, process within within the UK obviously the traditions here in the United Kingdom is having that get together the family get together the, the, the beautiful Christmas lunch where I know from being brought up uh, you know, in, in a typical uh, English-British uh, family and home, it's all about hands-on and everybody helping each other and helping around the table and putting your best foot forward in the sense of bringing everyone together and, and connecting on these wonderful opportunities to speak and engage and just really, I think, embrace uh, what Christmas brings to us as, as human beings and the whole uh, religious factor behind it as well. There's, there's, this is obviously a, a religious ceremony, a, a well, religious uh, you know, birth of Christ. And this is something that here in the UK has been strong in tradition. And again, when it comes to these incredible uh, sort of traditions within the, the, the sort of giving of Christmas, it's about being mindful and it's about being uh, respectful. It's about sitting at the dining room table or the lunch table, having very good uh, manners and, and etiquette and being mindful that there are other people engaging and connecting with you around the table. So a lot of people look at etiquette and manners uh, as you know, you quite rightly said earlier on, Ian, is, 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 is for everybody is, is it about the knife and fork? Well, actually it is. It's how we conduct ourselves at the table is very much gonna have an impact on putting our best foot forward. And, and again, I think this is something that for me is such an opportunity for you to put everything into thinking about how important table manners are. And it's not necessarily just eating with a knife and fork. Many cultures eat with their right hand. Some cultures eat with chopsticks. So it's about having that uh, understanding of important table manners and thinking about the people that you're engaging with. Some of the other areas and traditions of uh, dining and etiquette when it comes to Christmas and gift giving is also understanding the importance of gratitude, showing people that you really do sh uh, respect and, and, and appreciate the invites to that Christmas lunch or Christmas dinner. So we have a, an adage here at the British School of Etiquette called the power of the pen, you know, writing to people and thanking them for the wonderful uh, gifts that you've received, for the beautiful meal that you've uh, been uh, fortunate enough to, to engage with and, and, and be invited to those people's homes or your family homes. Um, the Christmas card is something that is, I think, a waving tradition here in, in the world today because, well, maybe it's the postage has become a bit slower than it used to. So a lot of people now have sort of leaning are leaning on the, the sort of e-cards. E, uh, I still believe in the value of traditional Christmas cards, taking everything into account. Uh, you know, if you're sending uh, Christmas cards abroad, you may uh, find the Christmas card gets returned to you because it never arrived at the destination. So that in a sort of a nutshell, I think those are sort of some of the areas to sort of focus on when it comes to Christmas tradition and etiquette and manners around the festive season. And we've just shown a photograph of you with Prince Charles. Um, and I know you talked to him about heritage and culture as well. Tell me a little about that conversation. 
again, as all of us know out there, uh, every country's been in hard hit this year. And, and here in the UK, one thing uh, that His Royal Highness is very, very focused on, as he is, he's patron to many um, establishments and charities, but the Heritage Academy is something that he stands strong behind. And that was a conversation we were having about uh, reinvesting into the history and the heritage of the United Kingdom. Uh, we all know, and it's a global phenomenon, many, many people look at, at London as the mo one of the most exciting cities in the world, if not the most exciting city in the world, and it stems right out into the counties that surround London. And there is so much history, there are so many incredible opportunities for us to, to be able to go and visit these amazing establishments, but they need upkeep, they need a huge amount of time and energy, and obviously there's a cost base behind that as well. So, so His Royal Highness Prince Charles is very passionate and very focused on encouraging people to go out and, and explore these amazing places. So it, it's a fantastic cause. I know you're very passionate yourself about the same subjects, and so am I. You know, I think the reality is next year we're going to need a major drive again to bring back tourism. Uh, that's heritage and culture, as you know, as well. Can, can I ask, how, how did you first start in etiquette? How, how does one become an etiquette expert? Beautiful question. It all started, um, my dad was born and brought up in this country and, and went out to Africa in the 60s. My mum, funny enough, was born into a Scottish family and uh, raised in a typical, what one I know we want to potentially put the past behind us, but in obviously a very colonial world of living up and growing up in Mozambique. And my mum uh, was fastidious about etiquette and manners growing up, as my dad was. Very fortunate to go to a good school, and that was just topped up to, to what my parents were instilling in us. And I've always loved helping people, yeah? and for me, it's about understanding the importance of giving people incredible tools to really elevate their lives and take themselves to the next level. And early on in life, uh, through understanding the power of etiquette and manners, I realized that I, I call this completely crackers or bonkers. I had this calling to really get out there and start to work with people and give them these amazing tools. You know, dig deeper than just the term etiquette and manners. What is it all about? You know, for example, uh, try not to let your mood dictate your manners, for example, and explaining that to people and how to get your mindset prepared in order to put your best foot forward. Because as we all know, sometimes someone can ruffle our feathers and the next person you happen to bump into, you trigger at them and it's got nothing to do with that individual that you're, you're, you're now engaging with. It, it was something that's a hangover from your past conversation, your past interaction. So for me, understanding the real sort of putting the flesh on the bone when it comes to etiquette and manners, it goes so much deeper than, as I said earlier, than just the knife and fork. This is about, you know, really understanding how important our emotional intelligence is and the power of EQ and manners and etiquette together just really sort of go like a hand into a glove. They fit so perfectly. So uh, many years ago, um, I had an award-winning restaurant in Cape Town in South Africa, and it triggered me there and then to sort of really start to, to, to incorporate uh, guiding and steering people and, and, and giving them these amazing tools of building confidence. And I truly believe when you've got good etiquette and manners coupled with your EQ, it's that adage, that beautiful French word, savoir faire. It's that opportunity to put your best foot forward. It's the know-how, it's the knowledge. And as you know, Ian, you've traveled the world, you've, you've had a phenomenal career and you know, I've watched your career, you know, obviously I'm, I'm only slightly younger than you, I think, yeah. But, um, you know, many, many years of your watching your career and, and unfold and you know one thing I love what you share in, in your in your um, in, in your journey is that empowering people so you know I, I'm like you very focused on empowering and, and putting women out in the front line of the, just admiring them and their incredible ability to to build and grow and, and help people there's that wonderful adage in life if you teach a woman something you ed educate a village and um, this is how I see our organization the British School of Etiquette we're on a, a phenomenal platform we've got representation throughout the world now we're growing uh, we've just launched in Bermuda and it's and, and a lot of the leaders that are taking on the, the brand the British School of Etiquette happen to be women and I'm just so excited and encouraged by all of this because the more we can help people the more we can prepare the next generations to come and this is what this this vision and focus is about and something that's fascinated me as well you do kiddie etiquette Tell me about what is kiddie etiquette? 
So we have this brand called Kitty Ket. It's been trademarked. Uh, we focus on giving children um, some basic fundamental skills. And people think, oh, aren't they too young to start learning etiquette and manners? Well, it's not about too young. I think, as you well know, it's about consistency and in giving them these amazing tools to get them thinking of the benefits and what they can attain and gain through coming on one of our Kitty Ket programs. So we focus, believe it or not, on mindset, on a growth mindset, giving them this understanding. And so drip feeding them little bits of uh, information that will help them with their EQ development and learning. One of the things, funny enough, we teach the children, and we've had some incredible feedback from the parents, is teaching them what we call our six second rule. Teaching children to stop and pause and think for six seconds before they engage or interrupt or open their mouths. And the feedback we're getting is just phenomenal. So the Kitty Cat program, we talk about sharing, we talk about kindness, we talk about caring, we talk about being helpful. We talk about, as I mentioned earlier, not interrupting. We talk about, uh, we touch on table manners because we have Kitty Cat 2, where we incorporate a dining etiquette module, which is, we've actually managed to do through Zoom, where, where the kids um, and the parents help set up a full full table, and we do the same, this side of the camera, and we talk and we go through the, the, the importance of table manners, dining etiquette, and that sort of thing. And I know as well, I mean, the, the, the phrase that comes to me, good manners maketh a man and maketh a woman. Something that occurred to me is, are your courses as well particularly useful for young people, say teenagers, going towards trying to get a career or a job? Yeah. Great question. And we've launched a brand called Mindset and Manners, which is again a trademark brand, and we focus heavily and beautifully with the teenagers. So much so that through that program, we often get teenagers signing on for continued development and coaching. So this is absolutely, so interview techniques, um, how to connect with people, how to network powerfully and fundamentally and proactively, how to sort of put your best foot forward, things about presentation. How do we present ourselves? How quickly does someone make a judgment call on you? Is it within a minute? Is it one to six to three seconds? And as you know, it's instantly. So we give them this opportunity to really elevate and build their confidence. And as we all know, you know, I have two teenagers. Teenagers have a, you know, we've all been there. There's an element of their lives where they're sort of finding their feet and it's, it's a challenge. And I think with modern society, I mean, we look at this pandemic we've got on our hands right now. I truly believe that through the, you know, the digital age is, is is, is we don't even know the consequences right now. And as we all know, teenagers are so wrapped up in their digital apparatuses that they are they haven't been taught on how to connect with people. You know, meeting someone, looking them in the eye, and I know the handshake's not uh, a popular way of greeting right now, but going back pre this, it, it, pre pre the, the, the pandemic, you know, that beautiful handshake, the importance of a firm handshake, the importance of facing someone fa and, you know, body, you know, chest to chest and those sort of things. And this is an area that we have got such an amazing traction with our Mindset and Manners program. Now, I think, I mean, obviously this year we've gone through the pandemic, as you just said, uh, and I, I see a new Britain coming out next year. I think it's going to be a Britain uh, that in some ways has to expect less for the time being uh, and have a better attitude. What, what type of etiquette principles would you like to see in Britain next year? What a great question. Well, firstly, the etiquette, I'm just going to break this up, the digital etiquette, there is a very important area, area of digital etiquette, just like you and I engaging on this amazing call together, is we're looking straight into the camera. We're not looking down at the person on the, on the screen. So there's etiquette when it comes to your Zoom and, 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 and uh, camera conference calls. So please, ladies and gentlemen, get, get yourself prepared mentally and emotionally. Dress appropriately. Just because you're working from home, Dress accordingly because that'll elevate your mindset. It elevates your confidence. Make sure that you get to your desk before a meeting in advance. Get prepared. Don't have any distractions. Make sure the lighting is appropriate. Make sure that you're looking straight into the camera. Going uh, away from the digital area uh, era, area now is, is for me, I think, patience with each other. Uh, we need to be very careful and caring toward one another. Um, and I think this has really come out in the wash this year. More and more people have really had a, a, have adopted a how can I help you, what can I do for you attitude. And we need to keep encouraging this. I truly believe we as human beings as well, we need to learn to be gentle on ourselves. And I'm a big, big uh, promoter of, of, of gratitude. 
be grateful for all the things you've got in your life rather than the things you don't have in your life. And I truly believe that by starting your day, what I call a gratitude journey. So, for example, today, and I was literally lying in bed waking up thinking, I'm, I'm grateful for X, Y, and Z. I'm so grateful I've got this opportunity to come and join you this afternoon and, and connect with you and, and your incredible audience. This sets me up daily. So this is something I would really encourage and urge people to understand the importance of gratitude. Again, be gentle with you. Get out there, do some exercise, go and get some fresh air because this will help you with your mindset. A lot of us right now are feeling incredibly sort of swamped or we're feeling like a big tidal wave is landing on our heads. And yes, it's challenging. It really and truly is. But I also truly believe that when you're kind to yourself, when you stop and think, you can start to make far better decisions. A wonderful... What is the best bit of etiquette advice you received in your life? Ah, I'm going to answer that in three, in four, four areas, uh, if I may. Yeah. First one is in a world where we can be anything, be kind. That's number one. Secondly is always have a what can I do for you attitude. How can I help you? How can I support you? Is there anything I can help you with right now? The third one is if we all do a random act of kindness on a daily basis, we may just set the world in the right direction. And the fourth one is don't ever judge anybody. Never, ever take a judgment on someone. Always try and put your feet in someone else's shoes before you make a judgment call. Because how many times can we be so wrong? And we've all been there. We've all been there 100%. The other area that I want to share with everybody is when we speak, we give life to our words. And you can't take those words back. So please understand, ladies and gentlemen out there who are listening to this incredible opportunity in this interview with, with Ian, is slow down before we speak. You know, think about what words are coming out of our mouths. Are they going to add value or are they going to be hurtful and harmful? So I think for me, it's about showing uh, respect for one another, giving each other the opportunity to share their thoughts and feelings, uh, to be a good listener, listen with the, the view to you have something to learn, listen with a, uh, a, 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 an ear that I have something to learn here, I have something I'm listening to understand rather than listening to reply. And again, I think one of the areas that for me, the core and crux of all of this is if you go out there and you really do uh, have an attitude of helping other people and supporting other people and not thinking about me, 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 your life starts to unfold and things start to change in an amazing way. And I know one of the lines you love to use is, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Just g g give me a quick explanation on, on how you feel about uh, delivery of uh, etiquette and good manners. Yeah, I think it's about putting your best foot forward. So whatever it is you do, whatever it might be, a, a smaller task, bigger task, whatever it might be that you're doing, make sure you do it properly. Make sure it counts. Don't take a half-baked approach or a half sort of a half uh, sort of uh, uh, do it half, go the full Monty, make sure that you as an individual, whatever it is you might be doing, you give it at your all, bring, put, bring your A game every single time you do something. And you know, when we're tired and when we're fed up and not really feeling um, on our A game, bring some very positive thoughts into your mind and, and, and into your memory of what, how you felt when you were in a specific situation. Uh, you could go to a happy place and help yourself and elevate yourself because this is all about making everything you do count. Because again, Ian, I'm, I'm a big, 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 a big fan of this, this uh, expression in life is, you know, you're one person away from someone changing your life for the rest of your life. And that one opportunity can just trigger. And it's because you brought your A game. They know just something about you they recognize something in you and this for me uh, you know everything I share with you uh, I, I, I do in my life I, I, I make sure I put my money where my mouth is and, it, and it's paid dividends for me all through my life and you uh, you've given such great advice this afternoon unfortunately time has caught up with this as always uh, I'd love to have you in the studio next year and we can talk a lot more about this at the same time Philip, can you just uh, finally say to me, how can people get in contact with you? We have a, a website called thebritishschoololetiquette.com, www.thebritishschoololetiquette.com. Our email address is hello 
at thebritishschooletiquette.com. And please go onto our website, sign up to our various different social media channels. We are very focused on our social media and we offer huge value. So we write uh, amazing pieces and news articles through LinkedIn, through Facebook, through our YouTube channel. Uh, and please, anyone out there wanting to have a conversation, we would love that opportunity to connect and engage with you. Philip, thank you so much this afternoon for your time. Uh, absolutely fantastic advice. I totally 100% agree with everything that you said as well. Uh, and uh, I, I hope, as I say, that you can come into the studio next year, hopefully when we're coronavirus free, and we can talk a lot more at length about uh, you know, really your expertise in this field. Thank you so much. Ian, thank you for the opportunity. I'm wishing you a wonderful Christmas. And to everybody out there, really all the very best. And just take each day as it comes. Thank you so much, Philip. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Ian. Wasn't that great information, uh, great advice? I think it's so important. You know, manners, just sheer manners these days and helping other people without asking for help yourself at times, I just think is so important. And especially at a time like this, when I think so many people are suffering as well. So that was The Voice of London today with me in Pelham Turner on ALB UK television and positivebritain.co.uk. I hope you're having a good, positive day. I hope you're looking forward to Christmas and a safe and pleasant Christmas as well. And I'll be back with you again for one more show again this week tomorrow. So stay safe, stay tuned, stay happy. Bye for now.